Hello friends, Deborah Driver here, and welcome. We are going to be taking our Glaceon Sandslash list, and we're going to take it into a tournament to see how well it can do in a tournament. As I said, it kind of hits these key numbers with the Versing Blue, the Sandslash, we can heal up with Lana, um, so we're trying to see how well this Glaceon Sandslash can do in a tournament setting. So we're going to go ahead... Yep, this is the list we want to play. And that's the one we're going to join with. So we're the only one in the tournament right now. We're going to wait for a few more people to join. So we can have that eight-person tournament. Uh, I don't know if you guys see this too often. It can take a little bit of a, a little bit of time sometimes when you uh, sign up for events like this. Sometimes it's like... Eight people right away are ready to go. Other times it's not. I might be kind of hitting a lull period in the game where there's not as many people on. So we're going to see how long we end up waiting before we find anybody. We've already been waiting, looks like, 20 seconds or so. Maybe 30 seconds. So we'll see if anybody joins in that time. Um, in the meantime, we can go ahead and look at the deck, though. It'll let us know when that first match is. And uh, I said we'll go ahead and take a look at this deck and kind of go over the reason why we chose to play this. Now we are playing Glaceon. We're playing it for that Freezing Gaze ability. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX, which does matter, uh, in play and in their hand. And then their discard pile have no abilities except for Freezing Gaze. So Glaceon's the only one with an ability. Um, and it only, only works for... Uh, GX's and EX's, uh, which is, uh, you know, so it's going to be blocking your Zoroark's primarily, your Mew EX's, those, uh, those kind of cards, Volcanion EX, so those are the cards we're trying to block with Glaceon, and, uh, that's what it's for, it's a really good Zoroark counter if you can get it up and running. And then Frost Bullet does 90 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This is a good spread damage. So you can set up your Polar Sphere. Polar Spear, sorry. Uh, which does 50 damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So it's set up for you to two hit your you're the first um, first monster, first Pokemon, and then uh, one hit with that GX on the second one to get your third and fourth prize. Or you really want to probably save your Polar Sphere for that last prize. Um, in this deck, of course, we have four EVs, so we can have the best probability of getting it out first. We have four Alolan Sandshrews. I chose the Fury Swipe ones because I was like, it does damage. It's, it's flip and do damage or flip and do no damage. So, although why not? 330 dam uh, free 30 damage if you get three heads why not try it we're playing two of the alone sand slashes from ultra prism with that spike armor which does 30 damage and if it's hit by your opponent's attack next turn it does six more damage so a total of 90 you put a choice band on it it's going to be doing 120 you put a bursting balloon on it and they actually hit you i don't know why they would it's doing 150 damage for no energy which is amazing you know you do you add 90 to that from your glaceon that's 240 you're not going to have to use anything if they come back and hit a little in the sand slash granted you're giving up one prize but yeah it, it's it can be those numbers are good and then we're also playing some slush rush here so we can get that one card every so often kind of helps the deck just flow a little bit better honestly i wish it could be like an extra card but i not quite there if it was draw two cards, it would be played over Zorak every day of the week. So one card is just... It's weird though that how one card is just not quite enough, but two cards is like overpowered. I don't get it. You know, it's that it's that bill effect, I guess. If you have bill... um, you do, it, That bill effect, you just draw two cards, draw two cards, draw two cards, draw two cards. That's basically what the game started with, was the bill, bill supporter, draw two cards. And uh, so we're also playing two Slush Rushes as well. So we're playing two of these, which is all I have, and then two uh, Slush Rushes. 
so we can draw those extra cards when we need it. We're also playing one Tapu Fini. Uh, this is because Glaceon's kind of a slower deck. It slows down the pace. So Tapu Fini is there to uh, to take out something that is just overpowered right away. So like a 4 energy Ho-Oh, take it out. A, um, a Guard of War all set up with energy on it, take it out. Buzzhole with 3 energy on it, take it out of the game before it becomes a problem for you. Aqua Patch is there to be able to set up Glaceon in one turn. Say you have a EV on the bench and they just knocked out a Glaceon of yours. You can Aqua Patch, double colorless, or you can, you'd have to evolve first. You'd have to evolve into Glaceon, Aqua Patch, double colorless, and then that Glaceon can attack is really what it's for. Uh, we also have Field Blower. I believe we have two of those so that we can uh, take out those Float Stones on those Garbodors, which we don't really care for. Um... It doesn't really matter if we take out that or not, because we're not reliant on abilities, but we have abilities. And then also, we really just want to prevent damage, so we want to take out Choice Bands primarily, so that Glaceon, we can put a uh, bodybuilding dumbbell on it, and it can survive for a few turns, because it'll have 240 HP. That's primarily what we want to do, we don't want to give them that extra 30 damage. Uh, Palpat is because I am scared of not having enough draw supporters, so I put Palpat in there to be able to reuse them. Uh, Rescue Stretcher, this is in case we lose some Glaceons or Sand Slashes or their prize, which happens primarily for us, is that we prize a lot of pieces of the puzzle. I've had it before where I've prized two Glaceons and two alone Sand Shrews and or two alone Sand Slashes, and I was like, uh, what am I going to do? Um, four Ultra Balls, pretty standard of every deck. Four Cynthia's, because we like draw support, and looks like we are ready to play, guys. But you guys saw the list, so you guys can kind of tell what we're going with from that. But we're going to go ahead and jump right into this uh, tournament now. We're playing uh, the, ton the Tonati. We would love to go first, actually. Eevee Bursting Balloon. Right there, Glaceon. Glaceon, right away. We're going first, too. Wish we had a draw supporter, but it might not be necessary. They cannot one-shot Glaceon. Depending what they're playing, we may not want to play our Bursting Balloon just yet. They are playing Tapu Lele. They could get the double colorless energy. So we're just going to go ahead and evolve. Get our nice and shiny Glaceon. Looks like we are missing... Uh, a slush rusher. Yeah, we're missing a slush rush and a Cynthia. This is easy to tell what we're missing. A Guzma we're missing. Uh, I believe we have all our ends, all our things. We have all our bursting balloons. We're probably missing some energy, but hard to tell. No, seven energy I think is what I play. So they could get a double colonist, but I'm not sure that's where they're trying to start here. Um, we could go ahead and set up that Aqua Patch for later by discarding two Water Energies and pulling out... I guess we could pull out actually another Eevee. Yeah, we'll pull out another Eevee. And I think that is a very, very good first turn. A very good first turn for us. We have our Glaceon set up, we took out their abilities on their GXs, and are we playing a, we're playing an Espeon, I assume, to be perfectly honest. They're gonna Team Flare Grunt us, get that water energy out of here. And a Poison Barb, okay, that's interesting. Poison Barb, Espeon. Alright, so something tells me they are going to attack this next turn. Kinda wish we had that attack, but we're gonna go ahead and put down the Bursting Balloon. So that when they attack our Glaceon, we should be fine. Um, we're going to have to hope that we top deck a draw supporter here, though, because we're kind of in a bit of a bind. We need uh, we need cards, and we have nothing to draw. So I guess there's an argument that you could put a, a Rengaroo in this deck so that you can have those constant draws in situations like this. I could have Ultra Balled those two water energies to get in a Rangaroo so that I'd have three cards right now rather than one. So they are willing to take that damage. Sweet, we got the perfect setup here. 
And the question is, oh, we got the bursting balloon. I was going to say, did we get the choice band? Uh, we did not get the choice band. But we are pretty well set up for the next turn. Um, actually, this is what I'm going to do. They're not going to attack us again. We're going to frost bullet. We'll take the poison damage, but they will not be attacking us back. Which means we prevent ourselves from taking some more damage here. Not to mention, if they do end up retreating this uh, Tapu uh, Lele, we can hit it with... Oh, the Ace of Roll at it. That's fine, I think, because you still can't use its ability. So they got the Espeon, they're going to get the Confusion, but I think they're going to take damage while doing so. Which is the plus side of things. Unfortunately, that is all of our Bursting Balloons, though. I don't, why are they willingly taking the damage here? Now they only have 110 HP left. Um, I believe... What we want to do here is evolve our second... Eevee here to another Glaceon. They already played their Lele down, not realizing they weren't going to get anything out of it. We are going to go ahead and bring that Lele up, I think. I know, I thought about the, the Wobbuffet, but the Wobbuffet's definitely not going to attack us. So it just seemed better to to get the, get the damage on the Lele. And our Sand Slash will hit for 60 damage if it is attacked. Our opponent does not seem to be noticing that the Attacking Sand Slash is a bad idea. They're like 30 damage, why are they playing that? Besides just a free attack, they're not realizing this extra put 6 damage counters. And I also feel like they did not read the uh, the text of the Bursting Balloon here, because that also, if it is attacked, puts 6 damage counters. Which is why most people do not attack into a Bursting Balloon. This is why Bursting Balloon's not a four count in every deck, because <laughs> it's it's not attacked into very often. There's the choice ban we are looking for though. Um, I think we just sit on this for another turn. We go ahead and heal some damage off of our uh, Glaceon though. And we'll hit this for 60. We have two Glaceons set up now, and Tapu Lele will go down to a uh, Frost Bullet, and Espeon is close to going down to a Frost Bullet, so... Never mind, not anymore, it's not. I don't want to, but I'm going to... Let's retreat this into the one with damage on it, because they're going to try to take it out anyways. So what we want to do is set up the Frost Bullet, and who has the most HP? We have Marini with 60. I think I need to hit the Espeon, actually. So we take out those two prizes. And get our Sand Slash and a Field Blower. But what's the first thing they're going to take? They might take a Baton or a Field Blower. I could see them taking Tauros, GX. Yeah, all they got is that Confusion Poison play here. We get both of them, nice. Uh... So what could Field Blower take out? Oh, our choice band. That's not what we want. So let's go ahead and Slush Rush. Get another Water Energy. Very nice, very nice. Um, this is nice because we can retreat this. And uh, set it up for the next turn. 
the same time. I think this is best to use this to retreat. The question is to go into Alolan Sandslash or Glaceon. I'm thinking the Alolan Sandslash. And if you're wondering my reasoning behind it, it's because he can do 60 damage to this thing. I did not realize they got Toxapex up. So Toxapex is definitely something we don't want there. That's fine though. We're going to spike armor here. And we still have 90 HP. So they're going to want to have to use their GX attacks, but they can't. They can't use their GX attacks. So they're going to want to gonna have to attack into this thing to take it out because poison it just does not do enough damage oh, they're retreating though they're gonna sit behind their wobbuffet and hope the poison takes it out it's very intriguing so we do get the cyrus it's all they have there is two though so it doesn't really help us we get the n the n will give them a lot of options so we can't really do that either um but we can't keep our sand slash up here too much longer because they do 60 damage to it so another two turns and it's good um what we want out here right now since they are sticking behind their wobbuffet is a uh, Glaceon, but we're gonna have to sit here for one more turn and do that 30 damage so that next turn if we can retreat if you can find a way we're going to and we can knock out this Wobbuffet and do 30 more damage to the Espeon putting it in knockout range for the other Glaceon now I think this what does this arrow mean? Does more damage from being poisoned. So that's what they're trying to do here to our uh, our little sand slash. Um, yeah, we want to take out that Espeon. So we can't play Cyrus right now because it's it'll affect the, what we can take out. Do not want to give them any more cards either. So I cannot play that in. Like, exponentially cannot play that in. Oh, I wish there was a way to retreat Sand Slash easily here. Maybe a Dawn Wings and a Crossman with a Float Stone would be a good idea in this deck. Because 30 damage on Wobbuffet does nothing for us here. The Aqua Patch is nice, because it can put one of these energies back onto the uh, Glaceon. Yeah, unfortunately, I need to... I need to end here. I need different cards than what's in my hand. And that didn't give them to me either, and it gave them a full hand, which I'm scared about. But we have the Guzma for next turn, so we can take out this Espeon next turn, maybe? I think they're going to try something new in this next turn. So we're just going to hit it for 30 again. Let it take two more damage counters for that 90. Um, this next turn is not going to take out the Sand Slash. It's not going to. They're going to heal their Espeon up. They know Espeon is their key to victory. But it still has 30 HP against it, which means... If I have a choice band, I can still take it out with Polar Sphere. Because it has 170 HP right now. So if we can do an 170 attack, it is worth it to take out that Espeon. They also have Mew here now. So that's something we do have to worry about. I think it's only as they're active. I think that ability might save them. I think they might be able to hide behind that ability and be safe. So we have we have the Guzma now. 
We have the choice band now. We can use this Glaceon one more turn. Got the dumbbells now, nice. What are dumbbells for vent? Uh, we have 90 HP, gives us another 40. Gives us 130 HP. I don't see anything here hitting that. Um, man, I do not like this Mew. What do I have to take out the Mew? Alolan Sandshrew? <laughs> Tapu Fini, I guess. Tapu Fini, I have to take out the Mew. So I think the best bet here is that. Put the Glaceon in and put the Choice Band on it. Um, save this a little bit. By putting the Dumbbells on it. We can... Frost Bullet for two, or he can just take out their only attacker with Polar Sphere. Now I always, always question whether it's a good idea to Polar Sphere. But I think we might be fine. Yep, I knew that was happening. Which is why I'm glad I got a Guzma here. But I need one more Guzma after this. And I, I should have it somewhere. We got it out of the prize card, so we should have one more in the deck. Which is what Guzmas are good for, is things like this. Like, I cannot take this out unless I Guzma around it. So what they're going to be doing is I'm going to take out this Wobbuffet. I'm going to take out this Wobbuffet next. And set up the survivor, I guess. I actually should not take out the wall buffet. Wall buffet, I should just do more damage to. So they're pretty. They feel pretty comfortable behind this mew. I think what cannot retreat easiest. I think what we cannot retreat easiest is the Toxapex. Ah, it does 100 damage though. So we're going to bring out Surviper. We're definitely going to be bringing out Surviper here. bring out our uh, Glaceon here. Let me draw one more card. We're gonna pay Palpat here. We need another Guzma. Actually I could use a Guzma and a Lana. So we'll do that. Oh they actually they actually decided that there's no way they can win this. I was able to prevent prizes just enough to keep them from, from going after it. So, because that took so long, um, our next match isn't here already. And we're going to see what else we're playing. We have not gotten a chance to look at the brackets at all. We're playing another Psychic deck, though. Yes, I would love to go first. You must go first in this deck. And you must start with an Eevee and a double colors. Or not double colors, but that water energy is pr preferable. Pref preferable. So we did pretty well. Um, our opponent just kept attacking into our balloons and stuff on that last one, which made them have to use their Nurse Joys. Um, fun! They're starting with Shining Mew. Which means I'm instantly going to go with this. Dumbbells, they're going to attack with that. And we can Glaceon next turn. So I'm fine with that. I'm a little worried I don't have something on the bench. Which means if they, you know, Tapu Lele, double call this, which they can't double call this anymore. They just, just put energy on their Mew to go ahead and Legendary Guidance, which I'm fine with. There's a 
They're gonna fuel blower my dumbbells. Okay, that's fine. I feel like that's a waste for them, so I'm perfectly fine with that. We're gonna go ahead and throw our Glaceon up here. A second set of dumbbells, and we're gonna end. Which will hopefully give us... That is the first time I've ever seen that. It did not give us the water energy we were looking for. Which is very strange, is all I can really say about that. It's very strange that we did not hit any water energy and got two more double colors energies. So we're going to have to rely on Glaceon's Freezing Gaze now to prevent our opponent from setting up. Um, seems like they're doing like a copycat deck. They have the Watch and Learn. They have a Mewtwo GX and they're going to be Max Elixiring to that Mewtwo GX and then Legendary Guidancing another two energies on it so they're trying to set up one thing that Psy Strike so they're hoping to Psy Strike us luckily we have those dumbbells to prevent the knockout there although if we can Guzma this next turn and then find a way to retreat Tapu Fini They have the counter energy on the pseudo Rudo. Because it'd be much funner to do 90 damage to Mewtwo here than, um. Which we can't do, actually. Um. Crap, I'm in a hard place here. It's Guzma and attack with the, uh. The Feeny. I might want to do that, I guess. I guess we're gonna goose mount the Sudorudo. Attack with Feeny. I didn't know it was weak to water. So the thing about this is it's relying on counter energy to attack with Watch and Learn. So what we're trying to do here is prevent that attack by one, knocking it out before it can attack, and two, uh, knocking it out when counter energy does not fulfill the energy requirement. Man, how can I not? How can I not find water energy? There it is. There it is right there, okay. So, we have the double KO here. Uh, Mewtwo's gonna come back hard against us, which means I probably should just, I should probably do the 30 against that. 30 brings it down to 160. I'm gonna be 10 shy if I do that. It's definitely going to attack me this turn though with that side strike or a full blur or or a full burst. It's too bad there's not a way I can like make it something else up there. Yeah, I see the timer. Alright, I'm going to frost bullet. The question is who to attack. I think it's best to take out the Mew. Just get that get that double prize. Three Ultra Balls are super helpful right now. <laughs> there we go, we got a Sand Shrew. A Sandy Shrew. It's so like I figured they're going to be putting out that Mewtwo. Dumping our Dumbbells and then taking the Knockout. So, it's not much I could have did about that. The only thing I can possibly do is... Yes, play that. It can't do nothing yet. So we're relying on Zoroark here. So what we want to do is get a Glaceon next turn here. So they wasted their GX attack to get that done. We're going to put out our Tapu Fini. As 
CN slash. Uh, I wish we had a draw support right now. This is also why a Lele could be useful in this deck. Um, don't really want to use PayPal yet. Palpad. Yeah, let's do this method. I hate to do it that way, but I think it's going to help us the long run here. I'm going to put that there. That there. And Aqua Ring. This nice little 20 damage to this Mewtwo. It's going to attack into a Bursting Balloon. And we need cards bad. We need the top deck of draw supporter. We play like 10 or 11, so we're hoping that out of that 10 or 11, there are still 8 in there. 8 into 36 is what, what 4 or 5 times that, so I think there's a 20% chance that we draw a draw supporter. So as you can see, the reason behind this is to prevent those two Zoroarks from activating. And letting her draw through her deck. And getting a massive advantage against us. So we're kind of sitting behind Glaceon for that reasoning. Hey, maybe we draw a draw supporter, get an Aqua Patch, double color synergy. Nope, we get a field blower. So they decided not to attack there, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna pal pad these two ends in there because I need more cards. We need that shuffle. I'm hoping to prevent those Zoroarks from working still. They do not have another 200 damage attack. Their attack does 120 right now. And we haven't been able to do almost anything to this Mewtwo. But this is exactly what I'm talking about with those choice bands. We want to take out those choice bands. Probably should have waited until they got another one. But this way they have to find another choice band in order to take us out. Um, man, we're in a rock. We haven't been able to drill anything yet. So maybe I will save this later on with a well-played rescue stretcher. And if we can kind of sit behind the sand slash doing the 30 damage and having them attack into us. But they're really going to go to town once Zoark is set up. Like right now they're mallowing. If we get an N, that is preferable for next turn. They're picking the exact two cards they need right now. And they realize that they can't draw it. Oh my god, I have to rely on Slush Rush right now. I have to rely on Slush Rush right now. And it gets me a Cynthia! <laughs> exactly! Gets me a Cynthia! is about all I could do here. Problem is I do not think there is another Glaceon in there. Um, dumbbells, dumbbells are useful. You got 20 right now and make it 60. They can hit you for way more than 60 right now. There's not much I can do here. Dang it! Stupid misclick. Stupid, stupid misclick. Hmm. Pretty sure our last Glaceon's in the prizes here as well. Which means we want to do this with this. <laughs> we 
We might end up losing this one now. Due to dead draws, which is what I was scared of with this deck. This deck kind of bricks occasionally. And we beat ourselves. Because you can see if we had Glaceon up in the active, attacking. It'd be a different story than what it has been. But we haven't drawn hardly any energy after the initial hand. We did get a knockout, but no, that's fine. I guess that dumbbell wasn't really doing anything anyways. But there goes, I think, all of our bursting balloons and all... No, we have one more bursting balloon. All of our dumbbells are gone, and one of our choice bands is gone. Um, so I guess it's really best to play those once you need them. So I'm going to take out Glaceon here, but it did buy us another turn we can kind of sit either behind we can tapu storm here and get rid of this mewtwo which is causing us such issues um or we can sit behind a lone sand slash and do some damage to it so i know now's the turn to guess what we're gonna do um, and I think because it has three energy on it i think i can set them behind by taking out this Singular, uh. Yeah, I can take out their, the singular, uh, Mewtwo with the GX attack and. Excuse me, set us up to be able to do better this next turn. We're gonna go ahead and end. Takes them down to two cards. They're gonna have to start digging for everything they need. And we're gonna go ahead and Tapu Storm. Get rid of this Mewtwo. Not a red array, right? I was like, oh, they're choosing who to put up next. So we're hoping to Hydro Shot this next turn. Question is, what to Hydro Shot? Nah, it doesn't really hurt us too bad. But yeah, relying on Feeny is not the best option. Heal us enough. 50, 70, 70 plus 120. It's way more than we have, so it doesn't really help us. We'll go ahead and slush rush first. See what's in there. Water energy. We'll play that on to the EV. Do we have something for it to evolve into? We do not. We do not have something for it to evolve into. So we have to take another prize in order to try to find that. Um, obviously it's preferable to take two prizes over one. Because they are definitely going to take this out. Ooh, we can't let him take that out, can we? Yeah, we're going to have to... Retreat this into Sand Slash here. Because Sand Slash does more damage. Oh no, not that one. No, I want a different one. How do I select a different one? Yeah, we're going to have to sit behind this. Let them take out that, and then we gotta go after the two prizes. I'm kinda just a little bit outmatched in this match. And we're probably gonna... Normally I'd, I'd stay until the end of the tournament, but I think we're gonna have to finish it off after this match. We just... They're a little too set up. We did not kinda draw properly to be able to take this on. And this is kind of a rogue deck to begin with. We're not really prepared 
to take on a Mewtwo GX with Zorark. It's a very interesting list, I guess I would say. And But they did have to use all their resources to take us out. I think they're right now, they're digging for a Guzma. They're hoping that they can pull up that Feeny and finish the game now. But I don't think they hit it. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is dig. I know there's a rescue stretcher in there, so I'm going to dig for it. You had to let me down like that. Didn't you? Um, so because I just put the energy on Eevee, I cannot Hydro Shot to take this out now, which means I instantly lose. That's whatever. Yeah, I lost. I ran out of time anyways. I'm um, gonna give my opponent a well played though. There's just... I didn't quite have the cards I needed. Prizing that Glaceon really hindered us. Um, among other things. Couldn't find the Rescue Stretcher, which I think was also in the prizes actually. If I go back, I could probably figure out, but I didn't wasn't really looking for that, so I didn't know whether or not it was actually prized. Um, so if you guys want a Rogue Mewtwo GX deck, let's check that out. It plays, it's playing the Zorg, the Tord engine, I guess. And it has Mewtwo GXs. Uh, Shining Mew to get started. They had the perfect start then. Um, and then Max Elixirs. Not bad idea. Not a bad idea. I think I like it. I'm gonna copy it. Don't know when I'll play it, but I'll copy it. I don't know why it's not showing up there. Um, and then Mewtwo. I think I don't have another one of these, but I have another one of these. No, I don't. Another one of these. No. I thought I had more than two of these. I actually don't. That's a surprise. That's fine. I would totally just throw a, a Dawn Wings in here instead. But that's the only card I don't have. That's fine. Stretcher. Alright, so uh, with that being said, I mean, we, we tried our best. Didn't work out for us. Um... We'll go ahead and see what the uh, tournament looks like, actually. And then we will go ahead and open up a pack of something, I guess. But we're about to finish this off. Just wanted to... If someone's going to share their their deck and you guys actually like to playing against it, you know, it's, it's not a problem to, to uh, borrow it and chest test it out yourself. So we're just going to name it Mewtwo's Warwick. We'll see if I even ever see it again. Um, sometimes like that, I, I barely even look at these. I have like 1,029 decks. So we'll see if I even look at that later. But uh, like I said, let's go ahead and check out that uh, event here. So we made it past the first round into the second round. We fought pretty hard against her with that rogue psychic deck that can really take out those buzz holes. And she loses right away. Loses right away. That's a surprise. He must have just had a perfect counter to her or something. Don't know. But she lost right away. She played sport, sports fan J. That's fun. So there you guys. We got a breakpoint and a guardians rising. I guess we should go open those. I guess that ended right, right as I was looking at it. It ended. Um... 
So we'll go over to collections here. Packs. We're going to hit up a breakpoint we just won. And a guardian's rising we just won. And in that breakpoint, what do we get? We got a Growlithe, that Drowsy, Clefairy, Chikorita, Froakie, Durant, a Bursting Balloon, like I said, it's good, Puzzle of Time, Cloyster, and a Dragalgi with that Severe Poison. Now, I think there is a Rogue deck based on this with that uh, Surviper we saw earlier. So, Surviper, Dragalgi does that Severe Poison, does four damage counters instead of one on a Pokemon between turns, and then you add those uh, Survipers to it, so you can have up to four of those in a deck, and you can do 80 damage between turns with your doggy for one energy, which is kind of fun. Um, let's open up that one Guardian's Rising we just won. What do we get in that? Not, not bad sets to get, I would say. Dark Energy, that Alolan Sand Slash. Many people will say that I should have been playing this one so that I could attack with Ice Ball in a pinch. We got the Dabbin Machop. It's Dabbin. Whimsicott with the Wages of Fluff. Love that attack. Uh, Ahala. Reverse Rare is a Pangar with that Magnum Punch. And our Rare is a Swellow. Nice. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. This has been Dapper Drabby. I will bid you guys Alola, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good day now. Bye-bye.